Hi, this video is about a general lack of function in the Christian church and I will be showing that function through an illustration from uh, Jacob Arminius but first I'm going to start with this uh, post from Sherry on the Pastor Paul Vanderclay Discord and Sherry gave me permission to respond to this post and it's a fine post and Sherry says I found what I wrote it wasn't a poem, but a comment I left on one of Verveke's videos. This is the bit about perfections. This comment is just a complaint about Christians who have such problems. They're connected to the church, but somehow the church isn't connecting with them. They're kind of losing the connection with God. Here it goes. As a Christian, I've always struggled with this idea of self-loathing in Christianity. That this is uh, Sherry talking about the church. It is somehow bound and gagged the creative process within individuals who adhere to it, to the detriment of themselves and Christianity. It has strangled the ability for people to love themselves and therefore to love their neighbor. It seems to me that as time moved forward from this point, that everything became less beautiful, as if slowly, life was sucked out of Christianity. I always imagined that God as a creator would have been proud of his creation with all its flaws. It's always the flaws that make a work of art real. So who was Jacob Arminius? Well, Arminius was born October 10th, 1560, and he died 1609. That's a long time ago. So the only thing we need to learn here is that the problem with Arminius has been going on for 400 years. So we have 400 years of people not being able to deal with Armi what, what Arminius has said. And every, we've had 400 years of people writing things about Arminius, both critical and both positive. And it hasn't really been resolved. I'm going to describe something Arminius said. Omar Arminius, his main thing was, well, since we have God, but how does man get saved? What is the action, or how do we how do we uh, know what is happening? And for Arminius, this something he wanted to get into was this concept of prevenient grace. And that is grace that operates in your life and brings you to God or brings you from harm. Prevenient grace. So, in a way, Arminius was looking at what's important. What's important in the Christian practice and how do you, how do you, well, how do you get to God and how does God get to you and what is going on and and what is around God that we can get into contact with and sort of just maximize and make this make our uh, worship with God more weighty and this is a prevenient grace and this is and this what Arminius says is important is prevenient grace and so in a way the the problem with Arminius is is prevenient grace important? We have to ask the question to Arminius. Why is prevenient grace important? I have a really strong memory of this book in particular. It's a programming book, Programming Windows 5th Edition. It's supposed to be the best book. You can see Mohammed down here. He says, Charles Petzold, you are the god of programming. And that is how I saw him. He was the best book. If you had the best book, you could do anything. You would learn it the right way. You would have the most connected guy, the best programmer, the most up-to-date information. Everything would be right. Everything on your system would, you'd be doing the right way. You couldn't even have problems if you worked with this book. But you get to the book and, well, does it work? Does it really, does it work? I've got two more parts left in the video. This part is about two men. 
One is a Calvinist, one is an Arminian. Well, the Arminian, he cares about that prevenient grace. He wants to surround himself. When he goes walks in church, he wants to have the right attitude, the right opinion. He wants to have the pastor's phone number. He wants to have the right Bible, the right clothes, the right hair. Everything is going to be graceful. He's going to have that grace, you know, seeping out of every pore in his body. He's going to look in the mirror and he's going to see, whoop, God's grace. It's right there. You can't, can't miss it. But the other guy, he's kind of, he doesn't really respect the Arminian. To him, when he goes up to worship, the, the worship is absolutely real. He is going to sit in front of God and he's going to bring himself in front of God and God is the only thing that matters. And this goes back to, to the last last example was the book. What I wanted was the real stuff. What I got was a, what attracted me was all this stuff that seemed to be good. It seemed to be the right stuff. But it was when I measured it. Anyway, anyway. Let's take the example of astronomy versus astrology. Now, astronomy was really advanced. You can you can measure the year, you can measure the seasons. Like in the ancient world, they were really good astronomers. They knew a lot about the way the the planets moved. They knew all this stuff and it was incredibly important for keeping time for but eventually they figured out, well, why not just why can't we uh, take this all this knowledge about astronomy and uh, bring it into knowledge about people? I mean, oh, Sherry, help me out here. I'm having trouble. Well, Sherry's talking about interposts. She's talking about Christians who struggle. They walk into church, but somehow they can't love themselves. They're looking to everything around them and somehow it doesn't relate to them. They're just not seeing grace. They're not seeing prevenient grace in their lives. And, well, that goes back to Arminius. You know, he came up with the concept with, hey, let's put prevenient grace in your life. Let's, let's measure it. Let's, let's get it down. Let's put it everywhere around us. Let's set it all up. Let's do all this stuff. And that is going to change your life. Okay. I'm going to go to the Sermon on the Mount. It's going to get a bit tricky, but I think you can handle it. There's, there's two men. One has surrounded himself with prevenient, prevenient grace. He's Arminian. Everything about him is right. And he's this this man. He's he sacrificed his whole life for this prevenient grace. Just his sacrifice is perfect. He's got the the best life, the best stuff, best kind of Christianity. He's going for that prevenient grace. The second guy. He's, he's also going to the altar. And he's going to go directly in front of God. He is going to just, where is God? I'm going to go right there. I'm going to get that one thing right. Now, those two men are different people. And I'm going to go to the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus Christ is going to explain which of those two men is the thing. Okay, here goes. You ready? Bam. Okay, this is actually a part of a Jesus's Sermon on the Mount. It's about murder. I'm going to start at Matthew 5, verse 21. You have heard that it was said to the ancient ones, you shall not murder. And whoever murders shall be in danger of judgment. But I tell you, that everyone who is angry with his brother is without cause and will be in danger of the judgment. Whoever says to his brother, Rascal, will be in danger of the council. Whoever says, You fool, will be in danger of the fires of Gehenna. Now, okay, here's, here's where it gets uh, kind of into the two men. Are you the Calvinist or you are the Arminian? If therefore you are offering your gift at the altar, and therefore 
remember that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Thanks for watching.